Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sonia Fernandez and I'm working in the transport and IP network department on Telefónica Global CTIO. And I'm going to present you what streaming telemetry is and how we are involved with this concept in our department. So for that, we are going to do a brief introduction and an overview in the current state of the networks. And also we are going to see how streaming telemetry solution can handle the challenges that the current network presents. And also we are going to see an over, an, our approach in terms of implementation in a real use case. So let's start with the presentation. Um, as some of you have said already in other presentations, we need to have an, a network uh, that will be able to be automatic and some tasks uh, that it makes sense to to make automatic uh, is the device provisioning, the compliance, troubleshooting, and also the data collection. And as you may know, data collection is the basis for the network monitoring process, uh, which is a key part in the network management process. So regarding network monitoring, there are different, uh, two different mechanisms. The first one is the pool-based mechanisms, where the information should be specifically request uh, to the device. And the other one is the push-based mechanisms, where we place the streaming telemetry concept. And basically, in, in this mechanism, uh, the device are in charge of push or stream all the information to an application server. So now we are going to see the current state of the, of the networks. So over the years, telecommunication networks have evolved in order to address the demand of the new services. So the increasing number of the uh, nodes in the network, as well as the advanced capabilities, uh, the evolution of the underlying technologies, and also the different ways that we have to access this network have turned these telecommunication networks in a very heterogeneous environment. Uh, as you can see here, we have different um, technologies for, for access the network. Also, we have different technologies in the core, which can be MPLS or carrier Ethernet. And on top of all of this, we have different uh, network service, services, which can be uh, voice, uh, television, or, um, or internet. And which, uh, which um, each of them have multiple different requirements. And as you know, uh, in order to implement these new services, uh, there are different manufacturers and providers. So we are also in a multi-vendor environment. And we are, when we talk about um, the management plane, there are also different solutions and network uh, technologies for handle this. So regarding these network technologies, uh, I'm going to briefly revisit some of them, but not going into much detail. So the first one can be the command line interface, which is mainly used for configuration, but is very uh, context and, and vendor specific. Then we have the six log, uh, which is a, a standard for message login, uh, which aims to report important events for us. Also, we have IP fix, uh, which is the standard under the Cisco NetFlow, and it mainly um, is mainly used for retrieve information from the IP flows. But this is also its main drawback. Uh, you only can retrieve this type of information, and. As you all know, we have the most widely uh, management protocol use, which is the SNMP. But as discussing all of these technologies will take us a lot of time, if you are interested in that, uh, I highly recommend you the RFC 3535, which collects the, the results from a workshop held in the Internet Association Board in 2002, where all the different these, uh, technologies and the requirements are present. But as SNMP was the most widely used, uh, main, maybe it's worth to, to have a couple of slides trying to understand uh, the, the, the operation and also the limitation that it presents. So SNMP is a management protocol for TCP IP networks, which basically means internet networks. Uh, it's very simple, so it can be implemented on any device, even in the simplest one. Uh, the, the mechanism to retrieve the information is based on pooling. And uh, SNMP is the protocol standardized for the management information at the application level. But the Internet Network Management Framework also specifies the management uh, information base uh, by defining the MIB and also the structure of the management information. And as 
I am pretty sure that you know how SNMP works. If you look at the, that picture, we have uh, a manager with uh, multiple agents and information exchange between them uh, are based on a get set re request and response. So SNMP has been widely used mainly because it supports heterogeneous and multi-vendor networks and uh, its simplicity makes it, po it, it possible to implement on any device. But when we are trying to handle large-scale networks, SNMP presents different problems. The first one is poor scaling. So SNMP presents a, a degradation on its performance when we add more agents to the network and also when we try to, to retrieve more information. Also, its extensibility is very limited and the, the semantics are, are very uh, strict anti-ordering. So an SM, SNMP-based network monitoring is long overdue for an upgrade in order to can handle the current networks that uh, we have nowadays. So, well, we have seen the limitations, but uh, we, we need to know what are the challenges that the, these new technologies should address. So, in the first place, we need to handle these large-scale networks. Uh, we need to have the ability to um, have real-time measurements. Also, we need to have an independence from the underlying uh, implementation, not only regarding the, the technologies, but only the, um, as well the, the protocols. Uh, we need to have a high-level management interfaces in order to reduce time uh, programming. So basically means that having common APIs to, to can access to, to, um, to this information. And also we need a common data model. And for the solution that meets all these requirements can be a data model driven uh, solution. And when regarding the, the monitoring, the streaming telemetry is the, the, um, the, the, the solution. So now we are going to talk about uh, what streaming telemetry is and um, highlight the main principles. So unlike SNMP, streaming telemetry is based on push and not in pull. And that basically means that the information is uh, sent to an application level, to an application server, and it's not this application or this manager who has to go to the, to the device to request this information. So if we take a look at this general definition of streaming telemetry, we can highlight three main uh, principles. The first one is that the data should be streamed from the devices, the second one is that the network operators should be able to subscribe to specific data items, which means that we have a subscriber-publisher mechanism in which we can filter out the data we are not interested in. And finally, uh, we need to, to use open data models for, for, for this information. So here, it's the, big, the, the basic operation for the streaming telemetry, where we have a, a set of publishers, which are the devices, and then we have the collectors, which are the subscribers. So as I have said before, the, the publisher uh, should send all the information to the collector and not the other way around. So here we have a, a, um, an approach for the streaming telemetry architecture. You, maybe you can find... Uh, other approaches on the internet, but they are basically the same. And as you can see, it's uh, divided in different layers. And on top of that, we have the collectors, uh, which are uh, which, uh, where all the information is pushed, as I said before. And then we have the different layers. Uh, the first one will be the transport protocols, uh, where we have the netconf, the restconf, and the uh, gRPC, which is Google Remote Procedure Call. Then we have the different encoding formats, with the well-known XML, JSON, and protobuffers, or in this case, Google protobuffers. And then we have the young uh, base models, uh, which is standardized by the ITF. So I think the, the most important thing here to highlight is that uh, these data models are independent from the technologies that you use in the rest of the layers. And currently in the industry, there are different approaches for uh, standardizing these, these data models. The first one will be a proprietary vendor solution, which doesn't make any sense from the principles that I tried to highlight uh, before. 
And the second one is a standardized model where different consortiums are trying to work on, on this, like the ITF. But uh, we are trying uh, to develop this solution and uh, we select the, the, um, the solution that the open config presents. I don't know if uh, some of you knows open config, but it's mainly a, a group of um, different network operators working together, trying to define a vendor neutral um, data models. Uh, so the, the, the main, its main feature is that uh, it's operated by the requirements that the network operator has. And the data models reflect the real needs of the industry. So, this is the, the current list of the participants that are involved in the Open Config Consortium. And uh, they are also working, uh, obviously, with the vendors because uh, it is needed a native implementation on, on the devices. So here is, again, the, the, the architecture for the streaming telemetry with some red boxes. So, it doesn't make any sense if the open config data models uh, couldn't be used with uh, all these um, set of protocols. But open config um, presents or proposes uh, to use a GNMAI uh, framework, which basically means gRPC network management interface. And uh, this framework is open available in its GitHub repository. So you can go there, download uh, all this code, and make uh, some tests in your laboratories as we are trying to do. So, OK, uh, streaming telemetry is the solution for our problems. But how we are trying to implement this in our department? So for that, uh, we are working in, in different uh, European projects. One of them is this one, which is called 5G Bini. Uh, it means 5G Vertical Innovation Infrastructure, and it's enclosed in the European ICT 17 call. And this call and also this project um, aims to build a 5G end-to-end -end facility that can, in the first place, um, demonstrate that the 5G PPP uh, network APIs can be met, and also um, that this 5G end-to-end -end facility can be used uh, by the vertical industries in the ICT-19 call in order to set up some research trials of innovative use cases. So uh, among all the activities that are carried out in this project, uh, one of our goals is try to integrate, develop, and validate the streaming, te uh, streaming telemetry technology. So as, as, you, as you might think, uh, in this project, uh, they are trying to, to build different parts, and one of them is uh, to build a testing and monitoring framework, which is basically composed of two elements. The first one is a testing system, and the second one is the monitoring uh, system, which is uh, here you can see the high-level architecture that they present in the project. And among all the different components that are here, uh, there is one called the monitoring agent, uh, which basically is an element uh, on the orchestrator. It's a service of the orchestrator that wants to retrieve useful information from the uh, device on the, on the infrastructure. So here is where we are trying to integrate or this streaming telemetry and open config data models. So here uh, you can see our initial approach of how to try to integrate this streaming telemetry. So um, there are two main parts. The first one is the orchestrator. And as you may know, uh, we use the open source um, uh, MANO. And the other part is the BIM, uh, in which we are doing some tests with the OpenStack uh, platform. So the idea behind all of this framework is to have a, an all-in-one service integrated in the orchestrator as the already deployed uh, the already developed ones, uh, which basically retrieves information from the VNFs following the open config data models. And a, 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 a normal flow here will be that the user requests some information to, to a specific VNF to the orchestrator. And uh, inside this telemetry service, through the GNMAI um, a framework that is available on the on the um, GitHub account, uh, will send a subscribe 
to the specific BNF with the with this path of the, the data. So then the BNF will send continuously information to this service and and then we, we what we do is that this telemetry service push the information to a message tool, in this case the Kafka bus, because it's the the um, the, um, the technology or the tool that uh, it's already implemented in the OSM. And then we will save this information into a database. And finally, the information will be available uh, to the user through a graphical user interface. So as they said in the OSM uh, presentations, maybe you want to set up some thresholds. And if the BNF overcomes these thresholds, uh, the system will be able to send uh, an alarm. And you can make some changes in this BNF or in the network service or in the network slice. So uh, in order to sum up uh, what um, I've been talking here, the first thing that we have seen is the streaming telemetry is a part of the network monitoring and is a task that, that must be automated. Then we have seen that the traditional pool-based mechanisms are no longer suitable because uh, it doesn't scale and it doesn't meet real-time requirements. Also, we have seen that the push-based uh, mechanism is the solution. Then we have seen that the streaming telemetry uh, is the mechanism that, um, that fulfills all these requirements. And also, we have seen uh, how to implement uh, the streaming telemetry in a real use case. So that's all from my, from my side. Thank you very much. And if you have some questions, I try to do my best. <laughs> Any questions? Thanks. It's uh, James Crawshaw from Heavy Reading. Uh, great presentation. Lots of detail. Thank you for that. Um, just uh, interested as to why you're um, using the, the open config approach. Um, other operators I know are quite keen on uh, NetConf as that uh, transport uh, protocol. Um, just interested as to the sort of the the advantages and disadvantages of, of NetConf versus um, GRPC. Thanks. Uh, um, the reason why we are uh, using OpenConfig instead of, for example, the data models that are standardized in the ITF is mainly because uh, of the speed. Uh, the ITF goes very, very slow, and OpenConfig um, uh, um, implements the data model in a very quicker uh, way. Also, uh, using gRPC or NetConf, uh, I don't think that you have uh, more advantages to use uh, gRPC instead of NetConf, but uh, while for the configuring part is uh, very focused uh, in using NetConf, for the, for the telemetry it's not clear uh, what to use. So we are using this tool in order to, to make some tests on how it works, but it's not a clear mind of how it works. Thank you. Was a question on? Thank you. Uh, Sonia, very nice presentation. Um, I just wanted to, to, to ask you very, um, maybe in your view, uh, how, how confident do you, do you think the industry is like, let's say when it comes to perhaps selecting for streaming telemetry the open config uh, stack or, or data model? I mean, do you, do you think that the industry is actually going to align in that direction or um, potentially like, you know, that is maybe being decided as we speak? Uh, I don't know if the industry goes to, to follow the, the open stack full, uh, the open config full stack, but the important thing of open config is the, the data models that they standardize, not the technologies that they propose to use. So maybe you want to use NetConf, but the idea is to have a common data model for trying to retrieve uh, the same information from a very different uh, uh, devices. So I think this is the, the key point, the, the data models, not the technologies that they propose to use. Anish 
Thanks for the presentation. That, that, that was very nice. And um, there's one thing I'd like you to tell us is, um, have you faced um, any vendor-specific open conflict models? And uh, um, if so, um, what kind of activities to cope with does the difference issue? Can you repeat, please? Uh. Um, have you faced the vendor-specific part of open conflict models? Yeah, we, we face that uh, trying to do that, uh, that test, some uh, devices implement their own uh, uh, data models. For example, Cisco has day one, but then also Cisco or maybe Arista or Juniper uh, devices also implements the open config data models. So, yeah, I don't know if I answer your question. So you, you haven't faced? Yes. You have faced? Yes, yes, yes. But, so, um, please, please tell me how to cope with the difference. I am. So we, How to you, face with open config the, the, the yes, vendor specific, so, so, you mean? Um, for example, um, you had to, um, you need, needed to um, fill the gap mm -hmm. within the um, applications and a collector. Mm -hmm. mm, I'm, I'm alright. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. If I understand so, you correctly. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> That's right there. Okay. I'll catch you later. So I have a short question. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned you're using a, a publish subscribe model. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a single network operator, can't the operator and or how does the operator program the devices of what they should be streaming? So that you subscribe, only. there's no sense in streaming things that, that no one is subscribing no, you, to. You, you subscribe to the specific data you, you want to collect, that's the, the key point. So there are different models, uh, maybe you want uh, some information about the routing tables or BGP or maybe for the, for the optical part, so you specifically subscribe to uh, that data and not to all data that the, this device can send you. Yes, but if the de is, how do you keep the device from streaming data you don't want to subscribe to? Because you specifically uh, request when you send the, re the subscribe to that uh, device. You said what you want to, to subscribe okay, well, I see. Okay. So you actually tell the device yeah, what yeah. you're subscribing. It only streams what anyone has subscribed yeah. to. Yeah. Which means that if you actually have sort of a shared in for use of the infrastructure with maybe sort of multiple virtual operators, they could each subscribe to different streaming mm -hmm. data. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. Thank you, Sonia.